Back with the Yodel Yeast in the Jack Rabbit Hollow. I'm Morgan. Welcome. Some different yeast and fermentation processes we're going to be dealing with. The fermenting of liquids, such as tea and milk. Kombucha is a lightly effervescent fermented drink of sweetened black tea that is used as a functional food. It is produced by fermenting the tea using a symbiotic colony of bacteria and yeast, or SCOBY. Kombucha originated in northeast China or Manchuria and later spread to Russia and from there to the rest of the world. Kombucha is typically produced by placing a culture in a sweetened tea as sugars are necessary for fermentation. Black tea is a popular choice, but green tea, white tea, and yerba mate may also be used. Herbal teas, or those treated with oils, may harm the kombucha culture over time. High concentration of honey and its bacteriostatic agents may potentially disturb the stability of the culture. Pure agave also can be used. Kombucha should never be fermented with stevia, xylitol, lactose, or any artificial sweetener. A baby, or a new layer of the SCOBY, is produced on the liquid gas interface during each fermentation. After a week or two of fermentation, the liquid is capped. Some liquid is retained for the subsequent batch to keep the pH low to prevent contamination. This process can be repeated indefinitely. In each batch, the mother culture will produce a baby, which can be directly handled, separated like two pancakes, and moved to another container. The yeast in the tapped liquid will continue to survive. A secondary fermentation may be accomplished by removing the liquid to a closed container or bottle for about a week to produce more carbonation. Care should be taken, as carbon dioxide buildup can cause bottles to explode. Left entirely alone to ferment with oxygen, the kombucha settles into months of production time, the baby thickening considerably, creating an ever more acidic and vinegar flavored cider. At any point, the kombucha can be tapped or have tea added. Liquid from the previous batch will preserve some of the culture. Kombucha is roughly translated to mother mushroom. You should check out the side of this brag vinegar. <laughs> I'm going to use tea. Any kind of tea will do. Black tea is traditional. I like green tea, especially like fruity, citrusy teas. Oh my gosh. <sighs> Anyways, tea is the nutrients and minerals for kombucha. A really high quality sugar. Turbinado sugar is probably best sugar in the raw. I just have white sugar. And you know around here my kombuchas really appreciate a good mix of love and quality ingredients. So if you can't get the quality ingredients then just make sure you provide them with enough love and you should be just fine. This is my method and it's a quick method. Nutrients and sugar. Yeast likes sugar. Yeast likes sugar, don't you? I know. You're gonna get the nutrients you normally would need from sugar without getting the sugar. I got this brewed cup of tea here. Nice white wine to kick up that acid content and add a little nutrients. You can use vinegar if you like and just top it off with water. Things like chlorine and fluoride in the water will cause them harm and it'll cause them to grow slower or maybe not grow at all. Sugar, water, nutrients, air. Make sure to always care for your yeast. Talk to it, thank it. Don't forget about it. Take this kombucha, we're gonna put it on the shelf for about three weeks and come back and drink it and make another batch. Here's a quick how-to on kombucha. Kombucha has been around for more than 2,000 years and has a rich anecdotal history of health benefits like preventing and fighting cancer, arthritis, and other degenerative diseases. Health benefits of kombucha tea include detoxification, joint care, and aiding in digestion and gut health. Detoxification. Detoxification produces healthy livers and aids cancer prevention. One of the kombucha's greatest health benefits is its ability to detox the body. It is rich in many of the enzymes and bacterial acids your body produces and or uses to detox your system, thus reducing your pancreatic load and easing the burden on your liver. Kombucha is very high in glucaric acid, and recent studies have shown that glucaric acid helps prevent cancer. Kombucha contains glucosamines, a strong preventative treatment for all forms of arthritis, aids digestion and gut health. Because it's naturally fermented with a living colony of bacteria and yeast, kombucha is a probiotic beverage. This has a myriad of benefits such as improved digestion, fighting candida, a harmful yeast overgrowth, mental clarity, and mood stability. As such, it's noted for reducing or eliminating the symptoms of fibromyalgia, depression, and anxiety. Immune boosting. Kombucha is extraordinarily antioxidant rich. Kombucha gives the body what it needs to heal itself by aiding your liver in removing harmful substances, promoting balance in your digestive system, and being rich
rich in health-promoting vitamins, enzymes, and acids. Over to you, Marwell. Kefir, 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 alternative Kura Talai Mudu Kakia Milk Kefir or Bugados is a fermented milk drink made with kefir grains, which is a yeast bacterial fermentation starter and has its origins in the Caucasus Mountains. It is prepared by inoculating cow, goat, or sheep milk with kefir grains. Traditionally, kefir was made in the skin bags that were hung near a doorway. The bag would be knocked by anyone passing through the doorway and it would mix everything around. Kefir grains are a combination of lactic acid bacteria and yeasts in a matrix of proteins, lipids, and sugars that this symbiotic matrix, or SCOBY, forms grains that resemble cauliflower. For this reason, a complex, highly variable community of lactic acid bacteria and yeast can be found in these grains. Kefir consists of microorganisms, lactic acid bacteria and yeast, fermentation products, carbon dioxide, ethanol, alcohol, nutrients, protein from milk, polysaccharides, vitamins B1, B2, B6, vitamin D, vitamin K2, folic acid, minerals, calcium, iron, and water. The composition of kefir depends greatly on the type of milk that was fermented, including the concentration of vitamin B12. Production of traditional kefir requires a starter community of kefir grains which are added to the liquid one wishes to ferment. The traditional or artisanal method of making kefir is achieved by directly adding kefir grains to milk in a covered acid-proof container, which is traditionally agitated once or more times a day. If the container is not light-proof, it should be stored in the dark to prevent degradation of vitamins and inhibition of the culture. After a period of fermentation lasting around 24 hours, the grains are removed from the liquid by straining using a non-corrosive straining utensil which can be stainless steel or food grade plastic and reserved as a starter for a fresh amount of liquid. The temperature during fermentation is not critical as long as it is not above one that will kill the culture, about 104 degrees. The fermented liquid, which contains live microflora from the grain, may now be consumed as a beverage, used in recipes, or kept aside for several days to undergo a slower secondary fermentation which further thickens and sours the liquid. Without refrigeration, the shelf life is up to 30 days. The grains will enlarge in the process of kefir production and eventually split. Grains can be dried at room temperature, freeze-dried, or frozen. Kefir can also be made using a tablespoon or so as a starter of live active yogurt. As long as it says live active, it should be good. Scobies in the jar. Now I need to give my dairy kefir cultures some food and liquid in the form of milk. There you go, boys. Breakfast. These need air to live. And we don't want bugs to get in. Here's a quick how-to on making kefir. When you're working with multiple cultures, you want to keep all of your different varietals away from each other. Don't put them in the same place. Six feet distance, 12 feet, 20 feet. Kefir is a drink popular across Eastern and Northern Europe. In Chile, where it is known as yogurt de pajaritos, little bird's yogurt, kefir has been regularly consumed for over a century. Kefir grains will ferment the milk for most mammals and will continue to grow in such milk. Typical milks used include cow, goat, and sheep. Raw milk has been traditionally used. Kefir grains will also ferment milk substitutes, such as soy milk, rice milk, and coconut milk, as well as other sugary liquids including fruit juice, coconut water, beer wort, and ginger beer. However, kefir grains may cease growing if the medium used does not contain all the growth factors required by the bacteria. Milk sugar is not essential for the synthesis of the polysaccharide that makes up the grains, kefirin. As it contains lactobacilli bacteria, kefir can be used to make a sourdough bread. It is also useful as buttermilk substitute in baking. Kefir is one of the main ingredients in cold borscht. Kefir may also be used in place of milk on cereal or granola. There's loads and loads of resources and blogs out there and nearly too much information to cover. So, here's just a bit of what I found. Feel free to check all this out for yourself. Kefir is a strong natural remedy against allergies. A natural antibiotic without side effects. Helps treat liver disease, clears the body of salts, heavy metals, and alcoholic products, cleans the body of chemical antibiotics, treats kidney stones. Good bacteria and kefir are able to fight off pathogenic microorganisms, cleans the gastrointestinal tract, helps irritable bowel syndrome, treats gastritis, pancreatitis, ulcers, prevents and treats colon cancers, improves digestion, improves body functions, improves the human immune system, cures candida, helps with hypertension, slows the growth of cancer cells, speeds up healing processes, treats psoriasis, eczema, and inflammatory diseases, reduces the size of tumors, treats heart disease, boosts the body's energy, it's a natural feel-good food, helps treat lung infections, cures acne, it has antioxidants and anti-aging properties, nourishes hair, replenishes the body of good bacteria after antibiotics, balances the microflora of the body's digestive system, regulates blood pressure, treats diarrhea, constipation, promotes bowel movement, has anti-stress properties, treats sleeping disorders, depression, helps with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, 
improves the brain's neural functions like reflexes, memory retention, attention, the five senses, reduces flatulence, lactic acid fermentation enhances the digestibility of milk-based foods, people who cannot otherwise digest milk can enjoy the vital calcium-rich kefir, helps treat yeast infections, helps with arthritis, colitis, gout, migraines, good bacteria manufacture B vitamins such as B3, B6, and folic acid, Helps with stomach cramps, chronic intestine infections, liver infection, asthma, bronchitis, sclerosis, leaky gut syndrome, and cures bad morning breath. I also found some sources that were using kefir to help treat their Crohn's disease. Crohn's disease is a type of inflammatory bowel disease that may affect any part of the gastrointestinal tract, causing a wide variety of symptoms, primarily abdominal pain and diarrhea. Crohn's disease is caused by interactions between environmental, immunological, and bacterial factors in genetically susceptible individuals, resulting in a chronic inflammatory disorder. Well, we already know that kefir is known to treat inflammation, so that's pretty cool. Other sources said they were using kefir to treat their autistic children. Because of the high calcium content, it has a major impact on the nervous system. There's so much here, and all of this information is readily available. A microorganism, or microbe, is a microscopic organism, which may be a single cell or multicellular organism. The study of microorganisms is called microbiology. Microorganisms are very diverse. They include all of the prokaryotes, namely the bacteria and archaea, and various forms of eukaryotes. Most microorganisms are microscopic, but there are some which are macroscopic and visible to the naked eye. Microorganisms live in every part of the biosphere, including soil, hot springs, on the ocean floor, high in the atmosphere, and deep inside rocks within the Earth's crust. Microorganisms are crucial to nutrient recycling in ecosystems, as they act as decomposers. As some microorganisms can fix nitrogen, they are a vital part of the nitrogen cycle, and recent studies indicate that airborne microbes may play a role in precipitation and weather. Prokaryotes are organisms that lack a cell nucleus and the other membrane-bound organelles. In short, they're very simple. Most living things that are visible to the naked eye in their adult form are eukaryotes, including humans. Most animals are multicellular but some are too small to be seen by the naked eye. Microscopic anthropods include dust mites and spider mites. Okay, so let me break it down. The useful yeast and bacteria, gut bugs, are floating in the air all around everywhere. We provide an environment similar to that of our stomach which attracts the good bugs into our fermented veggies, milk, or tea. These good bugs are then transferred to our stomachs at the moment of oral impact. The fresh, new bugs, bacteria, and yeast go to town on the gut flora and lining, cleaning, replenishing, and producing useful, usable vitamins, minerals, and acids. Old, tired bugs and harmful pathogenic bacteria and yeast are then killed in the process due to the inhospitable environment created by the high levels of lactic and other acids, which for us are good and usable. Because the bugs digested the food prior to our eating it and turned it into usable nutrients, the stomach is able to bypass a majority of the digestion process and go to town with the usable minerals right away, sending them to be processed into a progressively new you. Okay, back to the brick analogy. Now, <clears throat> let's say you were building two brick houses. Okay, two, two separate brick houses. One house, you had to mix the mortar and cast the bricks all by hand before you could actually build with them. The other house, you were building with already made bricks, so you could immediately go to town and start building your walls. Yeah, 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 I think that works. Giving the body ready to use building blocks and replenishing the health task force at the same time. Another neat part about this symbiotic relationship is that the gut bugs attracted to the food we're fermenting also crave those types of food. Humans, being about 90% microbial, will then in turn crave those foods. <clears throat> okay, here's an example. So eating fast foods, high fat, high starch, carb foods, that attracts gut bugs that crave those fatty, starchy foods. It attracts them into the consumer's stomach. That influences the consumer to also crave those types of fatty, starchy foods. Eating live fermented veggies attracts the bugs that crave vegetables into the consumer's stomach, influencing that consumer to crave the vegetables also. It, it becomes a cycle. Ever dislike a food but eat it anyways and find yourself slowly liking it more and more? Could be the introduction of the new food loving microbes. This totally happened to me. Used to severely dislike cilantro. And let's just say that I now carry on a deep abiding relationship with my pungent friend. Patients who have taken large doses of antibiotics for a period of time may develop gut problems due to the lack of healthy functioning bacteria in their gut. Because as the antibiotics kill off the bad bugs, they also kill off the good bugs. So it is important to replenish the good bugs by ingesting probiotics after the antibiotic period has ended. This can be done by eating live fermented foods such as fermented veggies, kefirs, yogurts, and other fermented live probiotic food. A great reason to cultivate your own live food is the yeast and bacteria attracted are local to the area you live in and are well equipped to deal with that environment and its allergens. It's the same reason why eating local honey can help a person develop immunities to local allergens. However it happens, either way, whatever works for you is great. 
Tummies are so important, like our feet, often neglected, who take us everywhere. Our stomach is the gateway to our body factory, the stomach which digests the food we eat into usable building blocks of life, the blocks that build and maintain all existence. These blocks that build our skin, hair, eyes, teeth, and much neglected feet. Even more reason to maintain, replenish, and care for our guts and the happy bugs living inside of them. Do not fear gut bugs, they are our friends. Microorganisms are a vital part of everyday plant, animal, and planetary existence. There are loads of different types of live foods, so find one you resonate with and try it out. See how you feel in a day, a month, or years. It could possibly be the beginning of another lifetime relationship. Next time you're out, how about picking up a few useful friends? A bottle of kefir, a glass of kombucha, a round of live veggies. Check out a how-to video and start a colony of your own. Give them food and love and watch how your human body ecosystem will flourish and thrive. All of this leading up into the grand finale. So I want you to take these episodes on yeast. Let them resonate with you. Because I'm going to show you the final epic yodel. The yodel of all yeasts. And we'll talk about those feet later. Well, that's all for this round. We'll see you next time. Later on, we'll put the sauerkraut on our tofurkey dogs. And... <laughs> <laughs> And later on, we'll put the sauerkraut on our vegetarian Reuben sandwiches. Is that really all it kind of seems like? Keeper, 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 keeper. Why well, you know, the same. That's just three different ways of spelling it. Because we do this, I just have to say what I'm asking you to say, but... Here, cat, here, all oh, anyone passing through the doorway to help keep... Language in this, dude. Oh, okay. Do you think I freaking pronounced this right?